Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you guys can see, the Corvette is still on the list behind us. We have been making great progress on that car. That project should either be done or well on its way within the, that video series. So we're also not going to be working on the SS today. Today, we are be focusing back on the truck. Now, I was actually just popping the hood and I discovered a major problem with the truck. So let's go ahead and show you what's going on. Look what happened. I discovered that the Spectre intake that we put on a couple years ago, the black molding, you know, that's on the filter to has totally separated from the clamp. So basically, this is my second Spectre filter that has broken, you know, torn in half basically. And I'll actually have a video to the previous one that tore apart. That was on the Chevy SS when we were doing an intake for the LSA swap. Now that one only lasted like one dyno session, one uh, drag racing session, and uh, maybe like two months of street driving. This filter has at least lasted probably about two or three years. I actually think I have a video for this install. I'll have a, that in the description up above as well. So let's uh, go ahead and get this filter out and we'll show you what we're replacing it with. All right, there you go, we've got the base out. All right, so here's what we're gonna replace the Spectre filter with. This is actually the same filter that I ended up using to replace it on the SS. And yes, you guys might be, you know, concerned with various K&N filters being applicable on diesels. I looked this filter up, a lot of people have used this on diesels, Duramaxes, Power Strokes, Cummins. You know, I looked in various reviews, so this filter, it has been used in a diesel application it's just that uh, K&N doesn't really have a filter replacement specific filter. You know, Inspector actually had a, you know, a brand, like that is branded as a diesel filter. The part number is RE0870. Again, that's the same filter that I have on the SS. I've had that on there for over two years and I haven't had an issue with it. So that is the part number and this is kind of what it looks like. Pretty simple, it's just a you know, K&N filter. And it's gonna be approximately the same size as the Spectre. The overall length is about the same. The diameter might be a little bit smaller, but what's important here is that this is a four inch flange. So that's what we need for the stock. Actually, that's not the stock inlet. The inlet on that is a AFE Magnaforce type old filter, you know, that, that intake's probably 15 years old. So I looked up that brand, AFE still makes it, but they've replaced that whole filter setup with just like some plastic pipes and like a plastic box. So they don't use the metal stuff at all anymore. So you can't even buy a replacement filter. So this should last pretty well, you know, hopefully it lasts longer than the Spectre intake. And uh, hopefully we don't run into the same issue of you know, having the old filter fall apart. All right, so here is the K&N filter. Shouldn't have an issue with it fitting. All right, there you go. Just kind of had to rotate that on there a little bit. Let's go ahead and tighten this back down. All right guys, there you go. That is the finished intake replacement on replacing the Spectre intake filter with a K&N filter on our AFE Magnum Force. So like I was saying earlier in the video, this is the second Spectre air filter that I've had blown apart. What pisses me off about this one guys is the fact that this was like a 50 or $60 filter. You know, it's like a diesel specific filter and it wasn't cheap. It wasn't like that cheap $20 filter that blew apart on the SS, which you know, it's 20 bucks, not a big deal. But this being like over $50 for a filter, just the, for the filter element, you know, that pissed me off a lot. So we uh, just go went ahead, picked up the uh, K&N, and this is the second time I'm gonna be throwing one of these out. So if you, ha if you guys buy a Spectre filter, just go ahead and do this and uh, 
throw it out in your trash can. So that's my recommendation for Spectre filters. Basically, don't buy them because you know why? They've blown apart. Now I've wasted probably $80 between two of the filters and they both failed at that same point, the mounting flange. And the KM, not had an issue with it and it's been in the SS for two years. This I hopefully will get a lot more miles out of it than that thing. So that just sucks and I don't recommend the filter element of Spectre. Their intake pipes are just fine. I've had no issues with the aluminum. I've had no issues with my mass sensor adapter. I've had no issues with the 45. I've got three pieces of Spectre on the SS that has worked without issue. Just the paper filter, you know, that cotton paper filter element just has blown apart twice now. So sorry, I didn't mean to rant on the Spectre filter brand, but just like I said, I can't recommend any of their filters ever for anything. You're just gonna piss away your money. So stick with K&N, should be trusted and you guys should be good with that. Now normally that would be it for today's video, but I'm actually gonna do an, another quick fix because we've got another video. It's probably gonna be two or three minutes long and it's not worth having a separate video for. So I'm gonna show you some footage of my window. When you close the door, the rear hatch window pops open and will not stay shut. I have had that rear driver's side hatch window pop open going down the road and I've had to like try to close it but the problem is when I try to close it it will not close because the latch mechanism has simply worn out over time and that is original to the truck it is 15 years old and uh, it no longer when you clip it it no longer clicks like it no longer stays in place so to fix that we picked up this GM part it's actually a brand new part from GM and is part number well they have torn the bag open, so I actually don't know the GM part number. So as I try to show you, the part number is actually destroyed. But I will have a link down in the description below where you can pick one of these up. And this will hopefully help resolve our extended door, you know, that hatch flying open. So let's go ahead, get this installed. All right, so guys, here is the factory worn out hatch. You know, it, it stays in place like this, but when you try to clip it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't lock in at all. It's like it's worn out. So we're gonna have to get this disconnected from this latch and also disconnected from the glass behind it. All right guys, I wanted to show you the two pieces side by side. Here's the new one. And as you guys can see, here's the old one. If you guys can see that plastic tab that's inside the clip is actually deformed. It looks like it has, I don't know, melted or snapped or combination of both. But this one, you know, is just a straight piece and it's just fine. All right guys, we have the new latch fully installed. Basically what you do is you twist the, you pop this latch off and that will separate the glass from the door. And then what you can do behind that is you simply twist this to the right and you'll see a slot and it'll pop out. And now when we close it, it actually latches. So as you guys can see, we shouldn't have a problem. It latches, that door is closed. This isn't popped out any, we should be good. All right guys, one more fix for today. We have our GMC keychain. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is the number one. And what happens is when I press the buttons on it, they, uh, they like to stick. Yeah, you guys can probably see that a little bit. This unlock button is completely stuck. So to help resolve that, I went on Amazon and I just picked up a set of two keychains that are basically replacements for the GMC. And uh, I'll have a part number in the description down below. I'm not sure if these are gonna be labeled one or two. This one has no label. This one has no label. So basically these are just empty keychains. And what we're gonna do is swap the guts from this keychain into this one. I think this is simply just an empty case. All right, so I actually just split the case apart on one of the new replacement ones, and I had no idea that it had a circuit board behind it. So that's very interesting. So here's what I'm gonna do. I am not gonna actually use the circuit board that came with the new keychain. I'm simply just gonna use the rubber pad and the plastic outer container. Here's our worn out and nasty rubber buttons for the OEM one from GM. This is the 
older circuit board. Here's the newer circuit board just in comparison. And as you guys can see, the board's a little bit dirtier because it's simply been used. So we have the old circuit board with the old battery and the new buttons. And I don't know if you guys can hear in the background, but my truck is going off. And there you go, we have a brand new keychain for the truck. And everything should work. So let's go ahead, swap the keys, and we should be good to go. And there you go, there are the quick fixes for today's video. We fixed the K9 air filter, we fixed the window latch, and we just replaced that keychain uh, for the GMC truck. So if you guys enjoyed this video format, please let me know. It's kind of a little bit different, you know, doing three smaller projects instead of one bigger project or having three small projects and three long videos. I just think, didn't think it was necessary. If you guys like the format, let me know. Give me some feedback down below. I always appreciate it. So that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. If you guys want to subscribe, please do. Also, don't forget to hit that bell notification button so you guys know when I upload new content. And as always, if you guys want to help support the channel, click all the links down below, including the website, BoneCrusherSS.com. We have all our merchandise for sale. Thanks guys, have a great one.